Hey there! Today we're going to talk about writing. If you have a fountain pen, you will use it for writing. Maybe you're an artist, maybe you use it for drawing, but I think the majority of us uses a pen to write with. Now, a lot of people have commented on my handwriting, and they appear to like it, which is, of course, a compliment, especially if you consider that in primary school I was always chided for my poor handwriting. Uh, my, my teachers were actually angry at me uh, a lot of times, and I really did my best, but you know, the more I did my best, the more I, I crammed up and, and the worse my handwriting got. Uh, I've used fountain pens for uh, quite a long time, um, multiple years, and a couple of years ago I decided to try and improve my handwriting. So it's nice to see that these efforts are, are paying off. Um, and I think, I, I firmly believe that everyone can have a nice handwriting. Now, I know that my handwriting is not perfect. I try to improve it every day, but what I'd like to emphasize here is that writing should be fun. It should be fun for children, but it should also be fun for adults. So if you are ashamed of your handwriting, and I know that there are quite a couple of you out there, don't worry. Your handwriting is an expression of you, of your personality. And if it is not neat, who cares? It's you. It's yours. No one can... I think no one has the right to tell you that your handwriting is poor because it's yours. This is the way you write. Now, having said that, if you would like to improve it, as I did, get yourself a decent pen. You don't have to buy a pen that costs you $500. You can buy a simple fountain pen, you can get started. And I think that with a, a bit of elbow grease, a lot of ink and a lot of paper, you can actually improve your handwriting quite a bit. Um, so. What I'll do today, by request, is show you my handwriting a bit more, uh, do some, some writing. I will show you three calligraphy scripts, foundational, uncial, and gothic. I think calligraphy is a very good way to improve your handwriting, because calligraphy is slow writing. Calligraphy is derived from Greek. It means good writing nice writing. Uh, it forces you to study the shapes of letters. I'll show you that in a second. What's important about that is that if you start to study letters for calligraphy, you will automatically also study them in your own handwriting, your everyday handwriting. So that can be really beneficial, and I think that's, that, that's important. That, that's something you can really do to help you improve your handwriting. So I'll show you that. Uh, I'll show you. Uh, I'll do the calligraphy not with a dip pen because that takes a, a lot of time. I just do use a, a, a pilot parallel, um, and that's it. I'll also show you the use of this interesting uh, calligraphy pen, uh, which has a very wide nib, um, and that's that's pretty much it. Now, some people have asked me for samples of my writing. Well, if you think my handwriting is so great that you really want to have a sample on paper, I will be more than happy to oblige. Uh, you know, send me a personal message with your address, uh, preferably physical address so that I can mail it to you. That's, that's easier than, than scanning stuff. Um, it's fine with me. If you want that, I can do it. Just let me know. So, let's go to the writing. Remember, writing should be fun. Fountain pens are fun ink is fun, fooling around with your pens is fun, I can really have a good time just doodling and screwing around a little. Um, have fun. Don't be frustrated, be patient, enjoy what you're doing with your pens. And that's all there's to it. So I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye bye! Okay, so let's start with some regular writing. I'm using a very, very plain pen here. This is the Parker Jotter in fine. Uh, I already reviewed one in medium. This just happens to be a black one with a clear section, which I kind of liked. Okay, so what I'd like to do today is do some scripts. Let's start with my regular writing.
And there you have it. So that's the entire alphabet. Now, as you can see, it's very easy for me to make these letters. Right? I'll just move the camera a bit. And these letters are something I, I kind of developed. Uh, M N O P Q R S T U. Oh, this was a weird S. W X Y Z. And um, I sort of developed these letters. I I made them evolve uh, from the the script I learned in school. So in the Netherlands we start with simple lettering uh, along these lines, and then we start to learn cursive. Oops, wait. And I always used to suck at that. I was very, very poor, and I was often chided uh, for my very poor handwriting. So at, a few years ago, I decided that that had to change, and I, I uh, well, started to try and improve it. And I think my handwriting is still uh, slightly weird, and it's. I know there are people who have much, much better handwriting than I do, but still are people who seem to like this. So, if you ever need a sample of this writing, some people have requested that, I'll be more than happy to send it to you. Just send me a message with your address, and I will gladly do some stuff for you on paper and send it to you. So here we have it. Uh, just to, to you know, uh, show you this with another pen, this is a bit more high-end. Here we have Delta Dolce Vita with another ink that's a bit nicer. Try to make your letters smooth. So that they are easy to join. You see, that's easy to join. When you write like this, uh, that's what I used to do. I try to make these letters you know, lose and, and separate so that they uh, I, I, they could at least be read. Uh, but now I, I, I tend to prefer a cursive type like that. Okay, now, one way I think to really improve your handwriting is uh, to, to pick up calligraphy. And for now I'm not going to use a dip nib, I'll use one later on. Uh, but for now I'll just use a, a platinum preppy so that, uh, excuse me, a, 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 a not platinum, it's a uh, the, the, the Pilot Parallel. Uh, I'll use the Pilot Parallel because I don't have to dip that, and that, of course, would be very boring for you to watch. I've converted it to eyedropper. Um, let's, let's have a look. I, I want to show you three alphabets, and I'm not, I mean, three scripts, types of uh, uh, calligraphy scripts, and I, I'm not going to do the full alphabet because that simply would take too much time. I just want to give you a feel of the alphabet. Now, bear in mind, I am not a master calligrapher. There are people online who are much, much better at this than I am. I just want to give you a taste. Now, first of all, Gothic. When people think of calligraphy, uh, they often think of Gothic. This is not Gothic. This is just me doodling because I got bored while I was talking. Um, people think of Gothic, and Gothic is great. It's awesome. I love it. But don't start with it because it's a very difficult script to master. And it's much easier to learn that if you have already mastered another script. So, let's have a look at Foundational. Foundational is based on Carolingian, um, maybe I should say Carolingian, I'm not absolutely sure. Um, it's, it's based on a, a fairly old medieval script. Um, I'll, I'll try to write the word Foundational. And the, the characteristic of foundational is that it is very round. I'm doing this fairly quickly so it's the letters are not all they don't all of equal size which is something you would like to attain uh, but I don't want to bore you to death doing these letters uh. 
So what you see in this script um, is the roundness, the general roundness of the letters. And you can do this quite a bit nicer, as I said I did it fairly quickly, but just to give you an idea. So it's, it's a very rounded script. And it's, it's fairly easy to learn, so that's, that's a good thing. Now there's another script that is somewhat related. Ah, let, let, let's do that in another color, otherwise all the black makes it a bit boring. I got another parallel here with red. Yeah, it works. Okay, so here we have a script that is somewhat different. This is based on some of the older manuscripts still available to us in the world, medieval manuscripts. I screwed that letter up, forget about that. Ancio. And Ancios, I think, are, are very nice. Uh, how did you do the L again? Well, I'm just going to do this. Not sure whether that's absolutely correct. Something like that. Um, if you think of Ireland, whenever I think of Ireland, this is the the, the, the script, you know, with with um, happy hobbits. Now, what what are those creatures called? The the the, the guys in green, the leprechauns. Um, so that, that's kind of what I, what I have in mind. Uh, this is a, a an even rounder script, I think, the foundational with a lot of these these nice curvy uh, letters, which which is fairly nice. This was the first script I learned. I didn't like it that much. I like foundational better. You can see the two are related, so I would start with one of these. Now, the, the great benefit of um, doing calligraphy and, and studying calligraphy is that it gives you a feel of letters. What is an A? That is an A. So you can see the shape the basic shape of the letter, and knowing the shape of the letter will give you a better feel for it. I'm just going to flip the page here because I'm running out of paper. Okay, here we go again. So, you know, that's I, I think that's that's a good thing. The same goes for a letter like, you know, the, the E or the I. You can you can make these letters... Don't you love the wet ink, by the way? I absolutely love the sight of wet ink. I'm a really weird person. Um, so, that's... Once you, you get to know these letters, it's much easier to make them with a fountain pen. I mean, clearly you're not going to write your letters like this. But even when I write them regularly, even in my cursive, they do look a bit like that. You see? So, that is a huge benefit of calligraphy. Okay, now, let's do what everything was waiting for, the Gothic script. Gothic is by far my favorite script, and when I write you a letter, I will generally use some type of initial lettering that's based on Gothic. I love this, this script so much because it is so elaborate, so nice, so so full of, of shapes. As you can see, this is a very long-winded script. Every shape you make is a separate line. A T takes one, two, three, four, five, six motions. And that is just a T. That's a simple letter. You saw this with the O. I mean the O. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, that's just an O. An I. One, two, three, four. It's, and that's like the simplest letter around. So here you have this. Actually it should get another dash like that. Um, I think it's gorgeous and it's great. Now when you're doing Gothic there's a few things you have to bear in mind. First of all, angles should be sharp. Let me see if I can... Oops, my tripod connected to my notebook. 
um, Gothic does not work like this. This is weird. Gothic is a narrow script. If you've ever seen a Gothic cathedral, I am not an artist, but then you have seen these large towers with the weird things sticking out, the pinnacles. Everything in Gothic architecture, whether it is the the towers, the pinnacles, or you know the the the, the windows, everything points upwards. You see that in the letters too. All of this points upwards. If you have a a nice letter like a B. I screwed it up a bit there, that's fine. Everything points up, and it points up because it points towards God. This was made at a time when the world was full of religion in the Middle Ages. Everyone was afraid of, of God and, you know, going to heaven, going to hell, etc. So everything, it's, a, it's a, a pointy script. Now, one thing you have to bear in mind, so first of all, no rounded shapes. It's If it's round, it's round like this, but it's never round like that. So angles are sharp. Um, also, when you make a letter like an O, this is a narrow script. So, uh, whoops, an O looks like this. You should have about one nib breadth in there. You see that? Then it's okay. If it's too wide, it may look okay at first sight. but it's no longer gothic. It's much too wide, and if you have a full text of that, it's going to look weird. Compare the B I wrote there to this. This is a monstrosity. It's no longer a gothic letter. That's a gothic letter. You see? Okay. Now, the good thing about Gothic is that uh, there are some scripts that are actually related to Gothic. Um, so, once you have mastered this, you can also try out another script, which may look like it, but it is just somewhat different. So, for example, um, there are some, there's a number of, of Gothic majuscules, so the, the capital letters. I'll do a, a fairly simple one here. So this would be a gothic H. This is a bit too long, but forget about that. This is just a, 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 a what do you call that? A, small, a lowercase letter. Now an uppercase letter would be a bit more elaborate. You could draw it, or actually draw it, you could write it like this. Or you could make it even more elaborate. Something like this. I'm uh, improvising a bit. Now, the interesting thing is that once you've mastered Gothic, you could start working on um, for example, Old English. Now, I'm, I'm only in the process of learning this, so bear with me here. Uh, let me see, how do I do this? Something like that. So this is an, a capital H in Old English. Um, you could make this a bit more elaborate, or you could add something like this. A lot of the Old English has this sort of these these uh, little things inside of letters. Now, as you can see, this is clearly related to the Gothic H. It's just a little bit more elaborate. So um, 
I think Gothic is a good starting point for, for some other letters. Then there are uh, letters like the Gothic Bastards, who are, and these are not uh, sort of Gothic assholes or anything. Uh, Gothic Bastards are, are, are mixed letters, which sort of evolve from Gothic to, to uh, you know, um, a more playful writing. I haven't mastered that yet, so I'm not going to show you that. Okay, so a final thing I'd like to show you, and I'm going to, I, I, I hope that this will actually work out. Um, I do need another page for that. Don't worry, I use all of this paper. Um, so, this would be a fine nib. Here we have a 6mm italic nib. And then here we have a 15mm nib. This is huge. Uh, this is uh, by Brause, a German brand. And this is called Plakat, which is German for freaking large nib. Um, actually, it means poster, but it's pretty much the same effect. This hardly fits in my ink bottle. And these nibs are tremendous fun if you like calligraphy. Now, they suck up ink like there's no tomorrow. But once you actually get used to them, there is nothing like it. Fantastic. I really, 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 really like the placard. I don't use it on a daily basis, but every time I do, I am amazed at the possibilities these nibs offer. Again, expect to burn through a bottle of ink in no time because these babies are thirsty but with a bit of practice and I need a bit more this will give you writing like no other pen there we go There you have it. Calligraphy, some writing samples. Um, I hope this was useful. If you need a sample, you can send me, you know, a, a personal message with the address and your name. I'll be happy to do some some sample writing uh, for you. And that's it. So I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye bye.